This lecture is on sulfides and native metals. And at the top, you see two examples of native copper from the upper Michigan Peninsula. And below, a list of common sulfides. Native metals include gold, copper, and silver, aurum, cuprum, argentum, the Latin words, hence the abbreviations for the metals. They form isometric octahedral forms, and the bonds are metallic, so gold is malleable and ductile. It's quite soft, hardness of two and a half to three, has a metallic luster sectile, and cuts with a knife, and is the best electrical conductor after copper. Silver is number three. Gold is chemically resistant to acids and mechanical abrasion, and it forms usually as native gold or gold-silver gold, alloys as hydrothermal ores in veins. Gold is concentrated in placer deposits at the base of gravels due to gold's high specific gravity, 19.3 grams per cubic centimeters. Now let's look at five examples of sulfides. Sulfides have a general formula, MEXSY, where M is a metal cation, charge of one, two, or three, and S is the sulfide anion, S2 minus, who, whose ionic radius is 1.7, on the right striated pyrite cubes. Sulfides are common minor constituents of many reduced rocks. They're not stable in the atmos oxidizing atmosphere. Typically, they're opaque, metallic, dense, relatively soft, colored minerals with high electrical conductivity. Some sulfides form by magmatic processes, such as immiscible sulfide melts separate from silicate magmas. Most sulfides are formed by hydrothermal fluid. Hot water with dissolved ions precipitate sulfides at room temperature to magmatic temperatures. First, let's look at sphalerite, which is zinc sulfide. It's an isometric mineral, rarely forms tetrahedrons, and even more rarely octahedrons and cubes. Most cases, as in the lower right, forms rather complex crystals. It has polysynthetic twinning on the 111 plane, and it has a perfect cleavage on 011. Hardness is 3.5 to 4, which is intermediate for sulfides, and its characteristic feature is that the luster is non-metallic to resinous and translucent. Color varies from white to black with addition of iron. It's commonly yellow where it has low iron to yellow brown to black with very highest amount of iron. And the streak is always a yellowish brown. The polymorph is wurzite. Galena lead sulfide is also isometric. The lead and sulfur both in octahedral coordination and this is an example of how you can figure the low bond strength out i.e you take the lead charge plus two divided by its coordination number six which is octahedral and you get 0.33 electron volts using pauling's rules as a consequence the low bond strength means the hardness of galena is low two and a half its specific gravity is very high seven and a half because it contains lead. It commonly forms cubic forms, as shown in the upper right, and sometimes octahedral forms, as shown in the lower right. Perfect 0, 1, 0 cleavage, which means if you, the cubic forms have the A1, A2, A3 axes at right angles, and each one of those has a cleavage. The color and streak are lead gray to silvery gray, and this is an ore mineral of lead, often containing significant amounts of silver. It occurs in veins and replacements of limestone and with sphalerite, pyrite, and marcasite. Calcopyrite is the next sulfide. It's brass yellow, commonly tarnishes bronze to iridescent blues and purples. The streak is greenish black, which is quite characteristic. It forms tetragonal or more commonly massive forms Hardness is three and a half to four, softer and darker yellow than pyrite, for example. And it's the most common hydrothermal ore mineral of copper associated with quartz, pyrite, and bornite. 
Here is pyrite, FES2. It forms isometric crystals. And most common, it is the most common sulfide, also called fool's gold, because it has the same sort of gold yellow color. It melts at 743 degrees C, so it's li largely formed in hydrothermal veins. It's brass yellow, it may tarnish to black. Its hardness is six to six and a half, which is very hard for a sulfide. It has a brittle conchoidal fracture. You can see some on the right there. And it typically forms striated cubes, as in the upper right, and octahedra is in the middle right, and more rarely, rare pyridohedrons, the pentagonal shaped ones below, may form an iron cross penetration twin. The last sulfide is pyrotite, and it has a st structural formula Fe1-XS, slightly less iron than sulfur, and that causes it to be magnetic. This is the only magnetic sulfide of any importance, and it's weakly magnetic compared to other magnetic minerals. Pyrotite forms hexagonal prisms with hardness of four. You can see some on the upper right. And it has a bronzish, brownish bronze color and a black streak. It occurs in mafic igneous rocks, gabbros, etc., as a magmatic sulfide and is often associated with nickel, copper, and platinum group elements. Thank you.